Hey folks, Randy here with Doing Cut and Trim. So, I wanted to tell you guys about uh, this problem I've had with my mower. Uh, this has been going back a year. Um, and it, it's been a problem that's gotten progressively worse and worse. And <clears throat> I kept trying, oh, I don't know what that was. I kept trying to work on it, trying to fix it, trying to figure out what was going on, you know. And uh, just wasn't having any luck. And I wanted to take you guys through the whole process, the whole genesis of the situation of how I figured out how to repair this thing, what I did, um, so that you can first see just how ridiculous this story is going to be, especially if you stick for, through stick stick with me through to the end. Um, but uh, also, it kind of shows you. I think the story shows you why I prefer to work on my own stuff. Um, so. <clears throat> So last year I noticed that when I was mowing, uh, the blades would randomly shut off. Um, originally the way the blades would work is you had to engage the bale switch by squeezing that. And then there was a second switch here that would activate the relay and you just click that switch that would pop the relay on. And as long as the bale switch was held down, the blades would stay engaged. If you let go of the bale switch, the blades would switch off. You'd have to squeeze it again, hit that button again and uh, the blades would re-engage. Um, and I noticed that uh, randomly the blades would kind of kick off. But if I redid my the process, they would come back on. Um, and this would, this would just happen really randomly. Just really randomly. So obviously that's pretty annoying. And uh, so, you know, I was trying to figure out what well, actually, that's not true. I was just thinking about what could possibly be the problem. Because the issue is, it's an electric PTO. And uh, the problem is, you know, three years ago, I couldn't even confidently replace a spark plug. So I've spent the last, you know, couple of years being in business for myself, learning how to work on engines. Um, but I knew nothing about electrical stuff. The only thing I could tell you about electrical stuff was that uh, you got to put batteries in for the remote to work. But that was about the extent of my knowledge. And so I was really intimidated to even tackle this. Um, so I just kind of, you know, maybe the maybe the clutch just needed a rest. It had gotten a lot of work that year. So, you know? And so it just, you know, whatever. So uh, I limped through the end of the season and was like, I'll definitely take a deep dive and figure this out over the winter of course did not and uh, so this season started and at first everything was fine uh, and then it started happening again um, but this time uh, this time it was a little random sometimes uh, re-engaging the bale would fix it uh, actually what I did I ended up uh, getting rid of the uh, switch, the I guess that little click, clicky switch. I got rid of that and instead replaced it with this switch. So this way, in order to engage the blades, you would have to switch that and click the bail switch. And that would keep the blades on, but the nice thing about using a switch like this is that uh, you could just have it in the on position and then... You know, you could just squeeze the bale and, and the blades would start. Um, so, excuse me, it was no longer a two-step process. Once you had that, flip, that switch flipped, it would just, you know, you just do that to turn them on or off. And then, you know, when you were done, you know, as long as the bale was held down, you could turn off the switch. And as long as the bale it was held down when you turned it off, the blades would stay on until you let go for the next time and then it would switch off. So, I did that, and that seemed to help a little bit. So, I was thinking, well, maybe there was an issue with the switch but then I was also having issues where randomly the blades would just they would just kick off even with the switch in, engaged but then they would kick back on and it would just keep going and it was like it was kind of stressful because it's like what is going on then a new problem happened um, the uh, fuse randomly started blowing so there's a fuse down here um, and uh, randomly the fuse would just blow and you know the the only electrical I thing on this machine is the the blades so you know all the electrical wires that run on this thing is basically a kill switch for the ignition coil and uh, the rest of the wires are controlling the blades and so 
like, yeah, I was like, man, what's going on? Wow. This is so frustrating. And it was getting to the point where I couldn't, like, the mower wasn't reliable. I was, like, using the Time Master for stuff because it was just, sometimes the mower just wouldn't work at all. Sometimes it would work fine. I started, like, experimenting with things. Like, I would put bigger fuses in it. And sometimes that would help. Sometimes it wouldn't. It was just, it was getting to be a thing. So I was like, you know what? There's no way this clutch has gone bad. It's only three years old. So there's no way it's bad. So it's got to be something else. Um, so I decided there must be an issue in uh, the wiring. But you know, I don't know how to do any of that stuff. So I decided to start replacing stuff that I actually could, I knew how to do. So um, I replaced the relay. Uh, like you guys know, I have a 52 inch uh, uh, machine and uh, the wiring is exactly the same. And so I um, switched out the relay to see if that helped. And I thought it helped, but it, it didn't. It was just the problem came back and it was just kept going. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I checked the, uh, the bail switch to see if maybe it was faulty. I, I got a multimeter and watched a bunch of YouTube, learned how to use it, and uh, so started testing stuff. So I was putting leads on, I was putting leads on, on there to see if the switch would activate every time, it worked fine. I was tracing the wires that are in here. <laughs> Talk about that, it's a, something else I gotta deal with, I broke that at one point. Um, traced all the wires, the wires all seemed good. There's an electrical box down here that's got a whole mess of wires, it's, uh, it's in here. I'm not going to pull that out and show it to you, uh, just because I don't I don't want to disturb anything in there. But I traced all the wires that were in there, and of course they come out into this hose. I traced that all the way down, traced all those wires, came down here, and uh, nothing. Everything seemed fine. Then one day I went to mow, and the blades just completely cut off. Completely. And I was like, what in the world? And so like, I finished mowing that day and I started checking, I, I came back to the shop, started checking wires and I found something. So down here, ugh, it's focusing on the wrong thing, down here, right there, kind of hard to see, but right there is where the, uh, is where the ground wire goes. And uh, I followed it back to here where this little connector is and discovered that the wire had actually pulled out of the connector. And I was like, oh my gosh, I have finally discovered what the problem is. I put it back in, I uh, secured it, and I was like, thank God, finally figured it out. And went out to mow the next day. And the problem kept happening. <laughs> so, I'm like so frustrated, you know? And so I'm like, ah, come on, you know? So I keep, I just keep going, keep mowing, you know, and uh, like I, 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 you know, it's just, I don't, I don't know what else to do. And so, and, but the problem keeps happening, keeps happening, keeps happening. And so I'm going and then all of a sudden I was like, you know, I don't know why it's just occurred to me at this point. I don't know. I was like, you know, I should, I should check the, I should check the wires on the, the, on the clutch. I should check them. Because, you know, up to this point, I was just working under the assumption that everything about the clutch was completely fine. And so I was like, yeah, I probably should actually look at it. Um, so I crawled down to take a look. Don't be so kind as to join me on this uh, travel down to the dirty floor. Ugh. So I went down to look and uh, see how clear this is? Let me see if I can turn a light on. There we go. So. If you see this wire, you see how it's all covered in tape and hose and all that? This was just bare wire. And it was actually, I've got it changed now. It was hanging down to here. And it was just constantly rubbing. And the wire had actually rubbed all the way through down to the, the wire was actually exposed. And it was actually grounding out right here. I was like... My God, I finally figured it out. So I took the wire off and uh, discovered that that wire had actually been uh, repaired uh, very amateurly, I would say. And so I pulled that wire out. I repair it the correct way, you know, using solder and all that fun stuff. I uh, shrink, heat shrink it, put it in some 
very nice protective tubing. Wrap that tubing in tape, connect it back to the uh, clutch, and I'm like, I finally figured it out. Thank God. Let's go back up. Good. Love being on the floor. All right. So I'm like, <laughs> finally, we finally figured out the problem. Oh man. Oh. And uh, go to mow the next day. We're still having problems. <laughs> It's still cutting off, but there's a new thing because I kept obviously because of the grounding out and stuff I was blowing fuses left and right and that stopped happening. So I was like, okay, so The heck, you know, and so I get like really like really really into it and so I start testing everything I go on YouTube and I'm like, how do you test a voltage rectifier? How do you test a stator? So I start testing stuff, like I'm testing this sucker, trying to figure out if it's good. Actually, that's the connector. I'm trying to test this thing, the voltage rectifier. I'm checking to see uh, how the, um, I, I'm starting to suspect that the stator's gone bad, which is, you know, the wire goes in here and, you know, it goes in there. And uh, I'm suspecting that the stator's gone bad. That's gotta be what it is. And uh, I even talked to a friend of mine, actually it was Nick from Mulchmate, I was kind of talking to him through this whole thing. And I was telling him, I think it's the stator. And he's like, I don't think it is. And I was like, well, you know, you're not here. So, <laughs> and so um, I'm like going through the whole thing, ignore the fact that there's two shutoff valves. That's another story I don't feel like talking about. And so I go through the whole thing. And I've pretty much decided that it's the uh, stator. That's got to be what's going on, that the stator's going bad. And that's why the blades keep cutting out on me. No other possible thing. I've literally... There's like a big animal walking by my shop. <laughs> Go away. So, <clears throat> I don't like critters. I don't like critters, I can't see. So I've made up my mind I need to replace the voltage rectifier. Um, not the voltage, the stator. I find one for like 35 bucks on Amazon. Um, and, uh, you know, look it up on YouTube. Not that hard to replace a stator. You just need a puller for the flywheel. Might need to replace a flywheel key. We'll see. So I'm thinking about that. But, you know, I also am keeping in mind that... Uh, Nick from Mulchmate told me he didn't think that's what it was. And Nick generally is much, 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 much more knowledgeable when it comes to this kind of stuff than I am. So I'm like, well, let's just hold off on that. And so I decided that I was going to, because uh, I couldn't, I don't usually have a lot of time at one time to work on a problem. So I was like, you know what, what I'm going to do is after each lawn, I'm going to spend five minutes trying to figure out, just trying to troubleshoot problem solve and so I do that for six lawns I'm trying to figure out what's going on this doesn't make any sense because here's another weird thing that started happening um, I noticed that <laughs> this is weird and this is also why I was thinking maybe it had something to do with the engine um, was because when I would mow you know and I'd have the bale switch engaged and I'd be mowing you know going forward I would notice the blades would cut out but if I went like that they would cut right back on and I would just keep going and so in my mind I was thinking that maybe like there was too much load on the engine like maybe the engine was going bad and so that's why I was having this issue and uh, it didn't actually make sense to me but I was like well I mean what else could it possibly be and so I keep trying to figure out, figure out and then all of a sudden I don't know why this even crossed my mind and this is the most maddening part of this story. I, uh, I, I started thinking about when I bought this mower from, uh, uh, from the, when I bought the 52 inch from a guy on the Eastern shore and he had, uh, basically like the bail switch. He had like, he had, he had messed with it. I don't remember something to do with the uh, coat hanger, but he had messed with the bail switch. And I was like, 
Hmm. And so when I was mowing the next lawn, and again, I don't know what made me think of this. This was a real pain in the neck to do. Um, but I would have the bail switch engaged, but I would have this finger down here on the back of the bail switch, and I would have it pushed in. And I went through the whole lawn, and the blades never cut off. Never. So I was like, hmm. So I went to the next line. I was like, well, I'm not going to hold my finger there. And the problem came right back. So I spent a year, yeah, a year dealing with an electrical problem, I thought, and it wasn't an electrical problem. <laughs> it's easier to tell from the rear here. Uh, but basically, you know, actually I'll just, basically, you see that? This bail switch has a pretty big design flaw. And that design flaw is that it is a very thin plastic housing mounted in a metal housing. And uh, it doesn't sit in there tightly at all. And so over time, because I'd replaced the bail switch back in 2016. So this switch is only three years old. But over time, when you would engage the bail, it wasn't able, the, the plastic housing was coming loose and it wasn't able to fully engage and so it was just on the edge of engaging but it would just you know sometimes it just wasn't quite there and so you'd have to hit it and then you know but when you would let go it would kind of pop back into place and that's why um it would always restart so <laughs> i spent hours and hours trying to solve this and what fixed it is a washer and black duct uh, yeah, a washer and some black duct tape down there. I just taped a black wa the washer right there. Again, so the bail switch is basically always touching it, and that gives it enough enough pressure to, to do what it needs to do. So yeah, uh, I spent God only knows how many hours. Uh, I actually I forgot I forgot to mention I completely rewired the the whole all these wires that are on here are from the 52 inch like I could completely rewired the whole thing trying to figure this thing out um, and that's what I ended up solving it um, so, so you know this whole process was super frustrating and was super aggravating and uh, you know many times I was just like I was trying to get new mower man but uh, I'm really glad I didn't you know because I was able to go through this process go through this frustration and I, I learned skills i know how to work on electrical components now i know how to do most of the basic things involving electronics because of this and i learned valuable diagnostic knowledge that i wouldn't have gotten otherwise you know never would have crossed my mind to check and see if a connector was i mean a, a, a switch was loose not that if it was working or not just if it was loose and uh so so I just wanted to kind of take you guys on this journey with me. I think this video has gotten a little long, but I just wanted to tell you, like, this is what it went through. Now, obviously, the the exposed wires down at the bottom, that is something that needed to be dealt with. And it's actually kind of annoying that that was like that, because the mechanic that worked on this mower in 2016, the last time this mower ever went to a mechanic, I feel like he should have caught that and fixed it. But he didn't. Well, what are you going to do? But uh, I just wanted to kind of take you guys on this journey with me, show you all the things that I did and uh, what ended up solving my problem. Uh, you know, all those hours working and the problem got solved by a duct tape, by some duct tape and a washer. So I uh, hope this was helpful to you. Uh, this is Randy with Dolan Cut and Trim. Uh, have a good one.